This is Andy Hamilton from Monarchy, and we're here with Kat Lintot. Kia ora. Welcome. Thank you. Excited? <laughs> yeah, I am excited. You're in Auckland? Yes. Yeah, in Tamaki Makoto, and uh, up I from the big smoke, was there was there snow this week in yeah yeah Wellington? The coolest thing, of, um, actually, it was crazy. I picked up my to uh, my child from um, kindy the day before it snowed, and she was like, "Mum, I think it's going to snow tonight." And then I was like, "No, oh. will it be? It doesn't snow in Wellington." And then woke up the next morning, there was snow peppered across the mountains. So I was like, "Oh, she's tapped in." My kids are in yeah. uh, have gone to Australia this week, and they were like. I sent them a photo of Dunedin and yeah. they were just like, that's a bit crazy. Yeah. It was just a blanketed. So I should do some um, I should do some welcomes. So welcome to Monarchy Real Talks, Andy Hamilton, co-founder of Monarchy. Uh, subscribe to us at monarchy.io. Subscribe to the Real Talks on YouTube, just find Monarchy. Um, this talk with Kat is about talking about founders and who they are and how and what they do, why they do it. How would you describe yourself? I've got creator, agency founder, yeah. co-founder, mm -hmm. director, producer, yep. web three -er, whatever yep. that means, <laughs> activist, but you said to me before, you're not really an activist. No. Because you love conflict. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not really like, I guess like activist is interesting. I think I'd be more of like impact focused um, rather than activist. Now, I, I do want to come back to, let's go through the various hats that you have, mm -hmm. like, you know, by day, by week. So, okay. first one. So, well, first one, I'm a mum. Yep. I have two children, one and four, uh, and that's, you know, a learning curve every day. Beautiful. Um, and then I'm a, a partner to my husband, who we're also partners in business and partying and life and business. Everything, all in. All in, best friends. It's great. Um, Do you ever have to get some separation? We have a, um, a arrangement where we have a holiday apart from each other, apart from the family once a year, so at least a week where yeah. we can do whatever do we things. need. So what did you do the last time for you? Um, I, what did I do last time? I would like go on a hike. I did like a five day hike like in the, the Abel Tasman. Yeah. Like so you, I did like you went just in me the bush. solo hike in the Abel Tasman like for five days. Yeah. Really? Oh, not a tent, like so huts. Good. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. What did Ben do last time? <laughs> he likes to go to Bali, sit by a pool and listen to pop music. <laughs> What pop music does he listen to? Uh, Give me like Dua Lipa or something. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's not like Sorry, Taylor, Taylor Swift. Uh, I'm sure he would listen to her. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Garth Brooks? Don't know Garth Brooks. I'm not oh, music, but he loves pop music. Yeah. Okay, so, so mum, partner to Ben. Yeah. And then so and then we've got like I guess I've got like a mission in life which is which I've actually just reconnected with over the last month, which is amazing. And it's really around like shifting the collective consciousness. Um, forward in a way that's like most also like aware in daily life um but then conscious and like a, in like a long-term vision and so i try Can you just and just explain that to me what that means so trying to get like the general population of the world um in a in a way that's like moving humanity in a way that's positive and by doing that, I've split it out into two spaces. One is awareness, which is like micro moments of everyday life. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's macro moments, which are more like the big lofty goals and things that we want to reach. And that's so hard to grasp that if you can um, tie them together and have like awareness and micro moments that can have like long term effect for the macro outcomes that you're trying to achieve, then um, it's a lot easier to achieve because you're like, me being present with you now means that we're having a really great conversation and we're engaged in what mm. we're talking about. Whereas if I'm not actually aware with you in this moment and it's a micro intention, then this interview is gonna be really crap. But the long-term effect of this is that I'm gonna be engaged with you. Someone might see this interview and go, wow, that's actually really cool. And there's like an outcome of that, which is like a long-term effect. Is it learned or did you always have this? Oh, it's like total learned. Like, total learned? Yeah, definitely. Is there a moment in your life that created the consciousness to be able to say that shit that you just said to me? Which is, by the way, the thing that, you know, the thing that I get from you, what I love is when you say you're not an activist, right? Mm. And you talked about being a storyteller. There are a couple of things there. Activism doesn't give space 
right? Because yeah. you're in it. Yeah. But what you talked about is around influence and impact. And I immediately, my analogy is great people, great sports people always have time mm. because they're not in it in yeah, the moment. Yeah, yeah. And you appear to me to be someone that's not, you, you know, so fully down the hole that you have no perspective. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good, I think I like to have perspective because no one's wrong and no one's right. So for anyone to say I'm wrong or right or they're wrong or right, it doesn't sit quite well with me. Mm. Yeah. So, so is there a moment in your life that caused you to be like this? Um, or is it just happened and evolved and you've harnessed it over time to get more conscious? I think it's harnessing over time, practice, everyday practice. But I have uh, an example which, um, I moved a lot when I was younger, so I grew up in the Air Force, born in Singapore, yep. um, moved every six months to two years of my life, so I've had a very transient life which has built resilience and change and I love risk and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I think I was about seven and I remember moving to a school and I was like, oh man, everyone is so annoying and I just hated everyone's little quirks and they oh. would frustrate me. And then I was like, oh man, life is going to suck if I hate everyone's quirks. So I was like, what am I going to do? I'm going to flip it and I'm going to love everyone's... As a seven-year-old? So, it was somewhere around there. I was like seven... And this wasn't your mum yeah. or dad. This no, is this is just... I remember this thought process. Where are you and your sibling? Third th child. Third, but third I've, child. Yeah. Yeah. So my brothers are seven and eight years older than me. So I probably had four parents rather than siblings more. Yeah. And um, is, you, is your last name your maiden name or married name? My, my name. Yeah. I, immediately what I always do is go, oh, I think I know your dad, but anyway, I'm not going to... If he's from the Air Force, yeah, you're I not probably him. do. Yeah. <laughs> I think I met him. Graham Lintot. Yeah, there yeah, you go. There you go. Small world. There we go, yeah. Yeah, so, so that's how I shifted my mindset, and I literally don't find anyone annoying now. Like, literally, no one. And I love it, because I just love... Well, it frees you up. Yeah, well, because I, like, love the quirk, and I think it's, it makes people their individual selves, so... And that's probably a catalyst, I would say, from where... What else do you do by day? Um, so we run a creative agency called Wrestler, yep. and that is um, making videos and social media campaigns, TVCs, virtual reality, AR experiences, um, anything. Work with New Zealand Police and uh, Education New Zealand, um, All Birds. All Birds. Shakti, we just come out. Yeah, All Birds. Yeah. I, I don't own a pair of All Birds. No, I've got jandals. Oh, there you go. That's it, jandals. <laughs> is that a rule? Did you just no, make a, did you I just just make a my, decision? I need to get my shit together and buy them. I need to put them in the Christmas list with my daughters okay. and wife. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The new um, track runners look really cool, actually. I want to get a pair of those. And run with them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. or like mountain, like it's mountain climb. It's like running on track, like, wow. a, like a That's track. That's right. Yeah. What else by day? Produce, um, producer? Producer, right. so I we also started a company called uh, Wrestler Studios, which really takes all of the original stuff that we want to make and put it into its own company. Um, so Wrestler so Agency like, is services, yeah, and then Studios is IP, IP. Yeah. yeah. And so we, um, I've all, lots of VR experiments, I guess, um, have run through that one, and then we've just developed a web series called Self Help, um, and which that I just love. came out. I watched Watch that. It. I watched it. Self Help on YouTube, right? Yeah. Self help on YouTube. I consumed it in two nights. Yay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was really fun. And that was us learning. So I'm really passionate about multimedia storytelling. So not using one, not being niche in one um, output, but understanding how story can affect, how, how can story sit across different mediums and platforms and be targeted to the right audience. And so this is our first experiment into web series and series format. Um, and you did yeah. that so that you might get. Like, do you want to get funding to take that to for the series? Yeah, or? yeah. So, like, learning how do you make a series from scratch and turn it into something that might be a half-hour show or got, gets um, goes on TVNZ on broadcast or Netflix or whatever. Did that cost yeah. a lot to. So to we do got. It? So this was quite cool. It was the first time New Zealand on air did a funding round that didn't have to have a distributor attached to it. Wow. So we were able to attach YouTube as a distributor along to it but it meant that no funding came with it so we got 300,000 from um from New Zealand on air and then uh we wrestler probably put in about 100k as yep. well of our like 
time and resources and stuff like that. Um, very small budget, um, but heaps of fun. So good though, eh? Because if you had a $3 million yeah. budget, you'd probably waste the money. Oh, if you're a first timer, definitely you wouldn't know what you're doing. So I think that like the industry is quite cool in that way. Like you, you will like have good learning experiences and then grow, and it's quite a good nurturing um, community. I reckon. That's pretty cool. What yeah. else by day? Uh, so Soul, Soul, Soul Ather. Soul Ather. So Soul Ather. Um, Got the name Ather. <laughs> Ather. Ather. He was not saying Ather. Ather. Yeah. Like um, atheist. Not yes, Ather. not that Ather. Yeah. So this kind of came out of Ben and I met and we really connected on the fact that we wanted to start a sci-fi fantasy world together, um, as you do. And so when lockdown happened, um, actually there was a New Zealand Film Commission um, grant called Boast and it yep. helps um, studios and stuff build their profile or their portfolios and business stuff, which yep. is cool. And they're like, um, so we're like, oh, let's try and put something in. And so Latha was the thing that we decided to pitch so yeah just started making a sci-fi fantasy world so it's Ben and our creative director at the time Chris Hermanson um, and the three of us just came up with this world and now it's two and a half years later maybe yeah three um, and we've raised a million dollars um, the in the world is really it's about impact as well so something so it's a young adult sci-fi fantasy so really looking at that like 13 to 17 year old age group that's quite influenced by media, love media and entertainment, um, but also impressionable in terms of values and stuff and identity. So this world is about looking at like what is a positive alternate reality that we can have because everything at the moment is like dystopian, it's like uh, crisis, like sci-fi stuff, like there's nothing really positive out there. So there'll still be drama and fun, but it's Where's like that around... You so, got the mill. So we got the mill. We went uh, to Burning Man on holiday with the mill. <laughs> No, we didn't. <laughs> um, we did so go to Man, out, We did go to Burning Man, yes, like a month ago. Yeah, we can anyway, talk about that we'll later. We'll talk about that later, yeah. <laughs> um, so we raised mill, and um, basically the, the dream is that we have, we're building in a Web3 format. So we've got NFTs that we've um, made, and we're actually going to be doing our first mint in about a month, wow. um, which is really exciting. And How do they get on that? Do you have a... How with web through community or how do, how do people know like how do they so we're building the community and we've partnered with a company called notables which yep. is um based in the us and they help build like it's very entertainment focused so they really understand yep. the entertainment space um building up the community who want to be a part of this um so how do people if they're interested someone watching this go i want to follow soul Ather, how do they do that um we'll go soul xyz which is our website or um, Soul Ather um, on Twitter or Instagram um, is the best way now. We don't have a Discord yet, but it'll be coming. And Do you like Discord? Yeah. Um, I'm actually not very good at any communication platforms, and That's I am good. dyslexic, so any words That's cool. That's are fine. tricky for me, but conversations one-on-one yeah. -on -one are great. So that's like my best Some people self. are like that, eh? Like, because um, um, I process a lot of email, Right. Once I get a relationship yeah. with people, I'm like, hey, you don't have to fucking meet every time. Yeah. Right? Yeah, Just yeah. let's process. Yeah. Right? Let's get shit done. Mm -hmm. And some people and actually I've learned that that doesn't work for some people. They actually want to sit down and chat. Yeah. I mean there's definitely space for talking and then there's space for like action things. But yeah. yeah. I can't I can't keep up with like so much so much stuff on Slack and Discord and um, Are you a one screen person? Definitely. Computer. One screen. You don't have like a big screen with splits. No, I just so work on my laptop. Inputs. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a Mac. Yeah. Fourteen inch, thirteen inch, sixteen inch. Thirteen. Okay. Is it new? No, but I really need a new one. You should. <laughs> you should. Uh, okay. Now. Uh, so, so, like, so quickly um, on Salatha still. So basically, we're dropping Sorry. NFTs, and then the goal with that is to create a community that will help us develop the creative. So we don't have to be the owners of the creative all the time. We can shepherd it, but we want the community to um, help form what it looks like and how it is, and then also have some ownership at some point as well. So really trying to flip the idea of what creativity is, which is a whole Web3 space, which is so exciting. Um, and then the first goal is we want to have an animated series. So think like Love, Death and Robots mixed with like Quantum Leap 
which is the old school 80s wow. TV show, um, but animated, which is really exciting. Um, and then, yeah, like a storyverse, we're kind of basically a metaverse where you can go in and play games and learn how to do it. Oh, and the world, which I haven't said, is that it was all about alchemists and they are trying to hold the balance between science and nature in the reference to our real world where technology is like taking yeah. over the world, but we're also trying to hold on to um, our land and our whenua and making sure that the, the na that nature is healthy and how do we balance these two, especially with climate change and stuff. So it's kind of like the parallels of that. And so the alchemists are the ones that try and balance it all. Um, and through some of the values that we want to try and embed, not like overtly, but through story is um, identity, so the alchemists reincarnate, yep. which means that they've lived all sorts of genders and all sorts of um, nationalities and races, um, and so this world doesn't have that conflict of like racism and yep. um, sexism, um, and it also explores the idea that we're, they are one with the land, so there's more of an equality between humans and nature. Um, so yeah, that's kind that's of pretty that. pretty cool. Yeah. Was it like that from day one, or is it yeah. you've added well, I mean, we've added it, but like that reincarnation thing was a really big part, especially um, I am really interested in reincarnation because if we think about like our whakapapa and our ancestors' decisions have um, led us to where we are today and then um, the decisions that we make today will affect everyone in the future. Mm. And so if we can change people's mindsets and go, oh, I am going to be reincarnated into the 300 year old me, I am going to be affected by this. I think there's an interest in correlation of how we would make decisions. Um, so I'm kind of playing around with that as well. Uh, anything else by day you do? Oh yes, yes. <laughs> one more thing. Um, I, we just started a, a company called Realize Retreats, which is um, basically, if anyone has ever been on a retreat, what you should one day any day you should never should should people huh you should never should should people. shouldn't they no oh, okay because i'd be like tell people to fuck off if you like sh you should do this i'm like why do you because i that? feel should is like aggressive towards someone but you could is more open okay sorry all right no that's no, cool but you i'll tell take us, that i'll take you that you should go on a retreat you could and should <laughs> Uh, well, basically, it's an, it takes you out of an intention of your daily life, puts you in an intentional space to start working on you. So I do think people should take out time to mm. work on themselves personally. I'm mm. Sorry, sorry, uh, microphone. Um, because it will make them a better person, so that they can come back and be a better person in society and in their relationships and stuff. So anyway, Realize Retreats is a uh, a platform where people can just run the retreat on their own, all the content's created, it's a handheld experience from the schedule from like like as soon as you wake up to when you go to sleep um, and we give you shopping lists and then there's recipes and you like cook with Megan May um, and everything. So it's like a very handheld experience of what a retreat could be um, and it's really designed as like an, as an, as an arc to get you good exercise, good nutrition and mental health. And yeah, so we're, it's beta testing at the moment. And we're in collaboration with Aroha, which is a retreat down, down in Glenorchy. Down, oh, Glenorchy, yeah. Yeah, um, and it changed my life. And then Ben went on it about three years later and then it changed his life. And then we became friends with Damien and Anna, who um, own it and run it. And um, yeah, we decided to try and take it out to people so it's more accessible price point. Um, and people can do it in their homes or they can do it with groups of friends at an Airbnb or wherever. Have you seen Kim.com down there? I have not. Because he lives up the back. I know. You do know that? Yeah. He answered my email the other day. That's cool. It's hilarious. Yeah. Um, how, do you, how do you decide what to do? Um, I, I'm not someone who's ever been passionate about anything. Like, um, yeah. Really? Yeah. You've never been passionate that. about anything? <laughs> not really. Like... I was sitting next to Ben, who's my partner, and when I met him, he was like, I love cameras so much, and I love make editing, and I love that, and he loves putting it all together. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's cool. And then I was like, I could come and help with it, I guess. You know, like, it was like more, so I've kind of always been like that. Um, but you sound very passionate about everything you've yes. just talked about. So, I, what I do is um, I kind of just let opportunities rise so if there's something that come comes up and i'm like yeah that seems interesting i really like that 
um, I'll just give it a try. So I'm kind of more a yes person and I try and get the universe to channel um, me in areas that is, um, seems helpful. So you I'm kind of no. more open. Um, I'm trying to say more no now because I have too much on my plate. Yeah, the boundaries. Yeah, boundaries are really important and compartmentalising is another thing that I practice heavily. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I don't know where I was going with that. But that's, that's good. You know, um, so raising money for, um, for Soul Aether, mm. Aether, mm. Aether um, did any of the investors say, is this your only thing? Or they didn't. They I didn't. Really, I was actually really interested. By I'm sure that. they thought it because you know most investors think. Yeah. I'm only putting money into a team that's mm. solely focused on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, no one asked us about our other. I mean, I guess they knew. Yeah. But they didn't really ask like, Good. what's your time split? Um, so directly, I think where Soul Ather, what was so interesting about Soul Ather for a lot of investors is that we have wrestler as a um, is a you know we make really good profit um, we make good revenue and we've got a really solid team we've got a really good reputation we've got great relationships with clients it's a solid company it's not going anywhere mm. and so the fact that Solatha can be run out out of it we don't yep. really have to pay rent with that yep. um, it's kind of it's a it's a safe space for the, for it to go and Solatha is a very like sprint like focus and then like a 10 year goal. So it's kind of like fast sprint for the first NFT drop and then a, a long term thing which actually doesn't probably need us full time on it all the time. Um, Plus we also, you know, you just hire great people. Like well, founders this is an should interesting never question, do right? everything. <laughs> so, so artists should never do anything? No, founders should never do everything. Yeah. Yeah. They can Again, have the learnt. vision. You've learnt. Um, kind of, but also like we just do like if you especially when you're in a film crew right you like can't ben was at one point you know producer director yep. camera operator editor um finance everything but that's like a one person model and then as soon as you go okay we've got a film crew now we've got a, a dop a director a producer a sound a lighting person you have to distribute responsibility and so I think we probably take that mindset into everything we do which just makes so much more sense. Do you think you're an expert in VR and AR? Um, I wouldn't say I'm an expert but I've definitely got experience. <laughs> yeah. Because you go a long way back in that industry right? Yes well the first the second wave. I like mean, five the first, years? Uh, I'd say it's maybe like eight years. Eight years. Wow. But um, I mean there's like the 80s VR and then yeah. there's the 2000s yeah I guess. Um, is your learning rate fast now on new things new technologies? Yeah, um, I think I'm a practical learner so if I have if I'm using it and having conversations with people about it I learn really quickly um, but I'm not. Does that give you confidence when you see new things like blockchain or smart contracts you can go oh, I'll, I'll just work it out or I'll get people. Yeah I, I got like quite a curious person so when it first came out I think it was probably like, I don't know, six, so, so yeah, six years ago when blockchain stuff yeah. was starting to go and I'd go to the conferences and learn about it. I guess I'm like curious in a sense of like new tech and yeah. how, it can, how it can translate to anything that I'm doing and will it make what we're doing better because of it. And that's how Web3 came into the sci-fi world. It wasn't originally a no, Web3 thing. So, yeah. Um, what is key in and around your life to enable you to be the special person you are and to do all these things that you do yeah which is a blessing right very i'm very grateful yeah um i think ben and i are a really good partnership yeah. we are best friends but we have like a very different in what we do in our business so we can um i guess divide and conquer but then uh, we're better as a whole than separate yeah um so i think that's a really important thing to acknowledge we also have family support, so both of our parents, or uh, my mum and Ben's parents live in Wellington, so we have weekly interactions with family, especially with children, it's mm. just incredibly valuable um, and amazing. And then we have actually, we have a really good group of friends, um, and like... Who you went to school with, or you just... Just through life, yeah. and we're like doing a tally of like a f close friends party that we're doing and we're like oh we've got like over 50 wow. friends that we just like dearly love 
And I'm really, really grateful for that because I think as you get older, um, sometimes you lose connection with friends and we put a lot of emphasis on friends. Um, and then wellness. So we also invested in a sauna, spa, cold plunge set up in our house. And because wow. we have kids, we can't really leave the house a lot. So we end yeah. up inviting our friends over once the kids are asleep and we'll just go do that. Um, and it's do you really believe in cold plunge on a, as a daily habit? Yes, I do cold showers in the morning. And then oh, I do yeah. like sauna cold maybe four times a week. Wow. Um, and that's just like built our resilience, our immune system. When we, we slowly just connect with friends more often and it could be business friends or like out, out of business friends. So we have really intense conversations because I don't know if like, if you've ever been in sauna, it's really intense. So you end up like not being able to do I'd small talk. I just people. I don't <laughs> yeah. want to talk to anyone. There we go. Because like my day, one of my habits is golf, right? Yeah. And, I, and I'm known in my family that, that I'm off the tee before, you know, and walking yeah. with the grass. That's, that's where I want to be. Yeah. I don't want to talk to some Muppet next to me. Well, mm -hmm. it might be my brother or he's a Muppet, one of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, or all of them. No, I love them dearly, but I like just being there, you know. Yeah, you're, that's your present. Is it's not your... about the, yeah. the conversation. Mm -hmm. I like playing golf mm -hmm. with mates, but yeah. I'm there because it's me, the golf course, the nature. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's so important to have your space of like not talking to anyone because you talk a lot around people, right? Apparently. All the time. No, I should be listening more. <laughs> no, you don't. Like, I think this is a great conversation that yeah. we're having. It's yeah. an energy flow, right? Yeah. Like, you're giving energy, I'm giving energy, and yeah. it's like a greater experience because of that. But you need to be able to ground yourself. Totally. To bring this energy. You yeah, know, and you don't energy. always realise that, you know, yeah. um, when, you, when you start out. And so this is a very interesting question, right? So my kids are 18 and 16, mm -hmm. and I practice, um, you know, one of the things I'm really proud of this week is, is that I've been saying to my 18 year old, hey, you know, you're going to Rhythm and Vines, it's your first Rhythm and Vines. I might know the people at Rhythm and Vines. Do you want me to see if I can yeah. get you some extra access or anything? And she was like, no, nah, dad, look, you know everyone, don't worry about it. And then earlier in the week, she's like, maybe you could. And so I, I, you know, I pinged Hamish. Yeah. And then Hamish had come down for New Year's Eve. And the thing I'm proud of is that I instantly said, that's not my space. Mm. Um, that's for the girls to go. Yeah. It's their thing. They yeah, don't yeah, need yeah. dad there. They should just be having a fucking good time, right? Yeah. So talking, moving from Rhythm Vines, Burning Man. Burning One Man. One word to describe Burning Man. Uh, it was really intentional. Okay. A sentence to describe Burning okay. Man. So... I think if anyone goes in to Burning Man or any space that has held for a week away from your daily life and you can come in with an intention, you will always get something out of it. Mm. And I think a lot of people go in to Burning Man with an intention and they seem to get something out of it. Um, and I think it's a great space for that. And you had a good time? Very fun time. Yeah. Yeah. What was surprising? The scale. Like how many people? Eighty thousand people on this like dead, Peaceful. dead land, basically desert. It was like um, I saw a moth. No, no, one moth. It was like nothing. Snakes. No birds. No nothing. No, no snakes. Nothing. Um, and you just it's like you bike everywhere. It's like forty-five minutes at least to get from one side to the other. But like, it's thousands of pieces of art, which is just so beautiful. And you can see them in the day, and then at night they're lit up. So they're kind of different. Wow. If, um, in the two cycles and um, you kind of like go past one and like something like the size of us is like a unit would be the smallest thing and you're just like oh it's so small I can't even acknowledge it but then so it's like it's massive like they're just everything's so big it's hard to describe yeah loved it loved it, it met was, strangers met strangers but ended up connecting more with people we're in our camp with who yeah. are a lot of Kiwis um, and that was a really good learning for us that you don't have to go all the way to the US to connect. It's about connecting with humans is what we loved the most. Um, and one of the biggest outtakes I got, I was like riding around and when I go and do stuff to um, top up my cup, um, it's in the land, I go tramping, I love like connecting with the whenua. And I was like, why, why do people come here? Like this is death, this is just death and it's not 
it's not fill it, it's not good for the land, it's not good for us. And then I was like, oh, we are, yeah. we are life. Humans yeah, the are life yeah. and we are wild. And I've been down on humans a little bit. Um, and that really helped me to see that, yeah, we should celebrate humans and that we are beautiful and wild and part of nature and, and that we bring life. Can you look into people, when you look at people mm. and talk to them, do you look into their souls? Um, not always, no, I don't know if people want that. Yeah, that's intrusive, right? Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. probably be in the energy, I like energy. Yeah. So just like... You seek energy or you bring energy? Both. Yeah, I think energy is, tr is like something that should be tr like transferred and flown. F flowing energy is what I look for. Do you believe in control for. thesis? What is that? A control thesis is, is you, you have a thesis about control. So, you know, it could be as a founder, you want every decision. I mean, I know the answer to this question that you're going to answer, but well, I think I, don't I do. Understand it. Do you have a control thesis? So, I can, like, do I like control? Yeah. Um, nah. I don't. Now, this is very interesting. It's one thing to be mindful and conscious in your life mm. and to be conscious in your partnership with Ben yeah. and in the business. Mm. And you can't, my assumption is you cannot have a control thesis over all the things that you do because you just couldn't. No. And it I think it would just cause anxiety. What about your kids? Um, <laughs> they definitely control me a little bit. <laughs> the reverse. Yeah. Uh, no, I try and t get them to teach me, like, this is really silly. I was like reading a book and then Willoughby was, had, had a big bowl of yogurt and she was like, I want to sit on your lap while you read a book. And I was like, I can't because I can't read the book and you be on here. And then she's like, yes, I can. And then I was like, okay, I probably could. You know, just like mind shift of like, I, the adult's not always right. And we actually, yeah, we should give it a try. I shouldn't say no when. Is that a good yeah, example? Yeah, I think it is control? because I think also like if you, you know, if you have a revelation, mm about something that helps you be a better person and lead a better life. Yeah. How do you then go about um, not transferring that to friends or, or kids? Yeah, I'm How going through this at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, so went to Burning Man about a month ago and have had just an amazing um, sequence of events that have helped me to grow from Burning I think Burning Man on its own is just one thing, but then having a few, um, building friendships, going to a couple of conferences that have really like challenged my thinking, and then having uh, like, I had a little women's retreat, founders retreat last weekend, which helped me to really synthesize all of the stuff that has happened and has, has helped me to articulate it, which is amazing. So I think like, one, you can't just go to one event and think it's going to change. It's like all the work that you do afterwards to help merge it and, and tran was it? translate it back into your yep. life. Yep. Um, and then, oh, where was I going with this? I don't know. Where were you going? Um, oh, no. Yes. Yeah, so, um, I don't know. I was trying to think of the next question. Fuck. <laughs> uh, where I was going to Looking is, at my paper oh, no, game. transition, tra yeah. like giving it to other people. Yeah. That's right. Um, yeah. So, Ben and I have been talking about how do we bring all of this awesomeness and energy that we've now harnessed from this experience back into our staff, back into our friends. Um, and I don't know yet, but I think that's what Soul Ather is. Oh no, actually I have kind of figured this out a little bit. Um, so I had to do this like mission thing, which is around the collective consciousness, which is cool. Thinking about the macro and the micro mm. moments and things. Um, and then, so I've kind of divided it into three goals, which is like a public facing one, personal one and then a whānau one and so the public one is Soul Atha and how do I bring all of my lessons and stuff through a mass media approach where I can yep. do community um, so that's that that's how I'm going to channel channel all the lessons that I am learning and will continue to learn um, and then personal which is I've decided to become a learner for the next seven years of my life um, which I haven't had a learning mindset I've had like a bit more of a growth mindset right. I would say so now I'm going to learn te ao, uh, te reo and te ao Māori. Because you're in Ngāi Tahu, right? Ngāi Tahu, yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, quantum physics. I love quantum physics, so I'm going to learn that, or <laughs> whatever I can about that. And then, what did you start? Did you go to uni? I did, but PR and marketing, yeah. Quantum physics. Yeah, and then third, Liz, energy. So I love energy, wairua, 
um, tent track energy energy transfer. So I want to do those three things wow. and weave them together into something artistic and communicating. So that's my personal. And then the um, third one is um, Fano, and that doesn't doesn't just mean my um, nuclear family, but my Fano, um, who I hang uh, a lot with. Um, and that's about learning with them. So especially with my kids, want to be like a one-year-old learning quantum physics with him at that age because I know I don't know a lot. So kind of going down and doing that. So that's kind of how I'm going to try and integrate it. Into and are you ready life. for the fact like it, that your kids, as an example, may emanate themselves in different ways to you? They may not have revelations the way you do. Totally. And Ben is yeah, different as well. Definitely. And you're cool with that. 100%. We'll see in 10 years when they're 14 and... We always and joke that Willoughby will become an accountant, which is cool, you know, but like we just Absolutely. have to... We just have to... We, sh we approach or a parenting... Yep. We just approach parenting like we're shepherding them into the world and hoping to create good humans for our community and have fun. How do you describe yourself to people when they say, Hey Kat, what do you do? Uh, um, I go, uh... I'm a storyteller, <laughs> probably, yeah. And you feel good about that? I do, yeah. I mean, I'm not a solo storyteller. I like, have a whole group of people and community around me, but I guess that's predominantly where I work, yeah. Uh, if anyone wanted to go to Burning Man, it's quite hard to get tickets. Yeah. What do you do? Like, how did you functionally get tickets? <laughs> Ask around. Um, or there is like a way you can go to the website and like there's like FOMO tickets which are like two grand and yep. you can buy them or there's like lottery things where you can go and there's like cheaper ones and it's closer to the time. I don't know. Just go on the website. There's lots of blogs about it. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, you know, did you know that two and a half percent of people who try and raise capital, two and a half percent actually successfully raise capital on average, right? I did not know that. Yeah. When we chatted, I didn't tell you, you and Ben, I didn't mm. tell you that, right? I don't tell most people that because you don't want to make people get, think this is too hard. But yeah. I suppose my question, so you've raised it and that, and you did really well in raising it for Soul Aether. Um, what's your reflection for other founders who are thinking of going out and raising capital mm. in a much more challenging market? Like, what's your reflection that you learnt about the process? Um, I think... So I think one of the best pitches that we did is one that we didn't ever think we would get money. Um, wow. And so it was a lot more casual. Um, we probably were just a bit more free and, and um, jovial and that was the best pitch. Um, so I think it's really hard to try and split the brain into not caring about the pitch, but just having a bit more of a like ease about whether this is going to give mm. you the money or not. Um, I don't know, the energy brings something to the room that's, you know, the, the investors can feel that nervousness. Whereas like, I don't know, we actually it was funny, we kind of approached the whole thing of like, um, we're not going to, we don't want VC money. <laughs> Did you get VC money? We got heaps of VC money. But we said, we don't want any VC money. And, the, and the, all the VCs, were like, I think they got FOMO. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, <laughs> um, but we're, so we weren't looking for it, but we were like, oh, we'll pitch you. We could show you what we're doing anyway. It'd be really good to get How advice. How many pitches did you do? Um, maybe like 20. And you got how many investors? Maybe about 20. Oh. Yeah. So you got no no's? Oh, we probably got a couple of no's, yeah. Okay. But um, generally we had a pretty sick And even some of the no's rate. turned into yeses, didn't they? Yes. Yeah. Funny, eh? Yeah. And that's FOMO. And they say also, no to start with, and then they hear who else is yeah. coming on. And then we also had someone who really wanted it and couldn't, and then we had to have um, someone, unfortunately, couldn't do it. And then, so then we had space for the person who was on the wait list, yeah. Negative energy for you, what does that look like? Um, it's like a feeling here. I can't even, yeah, I don't is know. Is it people? Like, are there certain types of people that give you negative energy? Um, I would say there's pain body. People have pain bodies and that mm. can affect, not affect me, but I just, you notice it. Yeah. And so people can bring their pain bodies and target the pain body into a way that's like not really productive mm. or appropriate. So when you get that, mm. how do you deal with that? 
Um, I Do you like sort of move away? Yeah, well, change um, the maybe like change the, the energy flow. So maybe we'll go for a walk or we'll never, never do this. Yeah. Um, I also, uh, if I know I'm coming into a space that's like that, I will bring the energy that I think um, would be a good space and I'll try and transfer that energy to them rather than them transferring the energy to me. Does that mean you use a diversion technique? No, I just bring in the energy that I think is good. Like if you ever, um, say you go into a meeting that is, you're really nervous about, yep. and like the person sits there, they've got the, they've got the power, they're holding the space in the room, and everyone, will, their energy will, will go to the energy of that, yep. pr that prominent person. And I've learned that, just learned that through like services and going into lots of meeting spaces and stuff. And it's always that one person. So even if I'm not that person, sometimes I'll try and come into the room and try and set a really calm, open energy and hope that that will transfer into other people. Which is pretty amazing. If you well, I don't know if it that. works, but because like. I, th I think, you know, in a lot of cases, younger people go into that room feeling in a depowered situation yeah and that's 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 super challenging i've got a friend today who's pitching mm. to a major pe investor out of australia and and she is incredible right she is unbelievable i'm all in on her business yeah and uh, but i know that she doesn't back herself mm. because she sees this massive investor who's highly successful who's a female and she's not worthy and i'm like bullshit yeah you're fucking incredible mm. you, what you have done in your business is so just be you, be yeah. amazing, don't run a pitch, just tell yeah, them why. Yeah, you can know that, but you can't, you, but sometimes your body doesn't know it as well. So it's like, how do you, you have to practice it every day. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Positive energy for you? What does it look like? Yeah. S laugh, laughter. Or just like, I don't know, I'm such a visual person. It's just like, um, showing up with like energy and yeah. positivity and I don't know, not being too serious. Do people get tired sense. around you? I don't think so, no. You don't think so? Nah. Because you're quite full on. I am now for you. Because <laughs> you're full on. No, I'm, I'm not. matching your energy, whatever, you see. Whatever, <laughs> whatever. What else have I got here? What gets you out of bed each day? My children physically no, probably out of bed. You up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's about impact, yeah. Just like making the world a better place, and um, it's really fun to do that. Helping yep. people do it. Do you have to make a choice? So, you know, um, some people talk about founders have to make a choice between power and wealth. Okay. okay. You don't. Um, well, I, I guess um, I probably don't care about power in a sense. Like I think impact is really important. Yeah. yeah. Power is an interesting word to use, I would say. I don't actually think New Zealand entrepreneurs would look for power in the general do. ecosystem. Do you know how much money you've got in your bank account right now? No. <laughs> do you ever look at your bank account? Um, I know, like, I have automatic payments that set up my mortgage and... Well, you got KiwiSaver? I do. You think so? Yes, I do. Do you invest on sharesies? Yes. Have you got crypto? Yes. Have you got NFTs? Yes. Jointly with Ben, we're like our joint in you our finances, them. everything. Yeah, we're jointly attached. Would you buy an NFT from Kiriyama? Yes. He is so cool. I know. I haven't met him, but you haven't met him. No, oh, I'm going to meet him. I mean, I've worked with him. Like I love his work. And yeah. part of the work that we do here is is that when when we hear and see the stories mm. of people like him, it just like drives us to because the he is extraordinary, yeah. but he's not alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not alone. Yeah. And, you know, I, I know the story in that we, we, we had David Ewan uh, here from Vivi, and when we showed him Kiriyama's art, the eyes, there's this moment where Pat and I are sitting there and you've seen his eyes yeah. light up. Yeah. You know, because that, that's what drives me. I, it's really easy for me to help one person yeah. in business because mm. I've done it for 30 years, but to create an environment where multiples are helped yes. and are self-empowered, mm -hmm. you know, is really important. But I think you get the macro through the micro. Agreed, yeah. 
you know, and that's so that's what drives me always yeah. is that you, you get that moment where someone believes in someone else and you're like, yeah. Well, totally, because like Kadiyama, which we all love you, um, is a great example if you're supporting him in a micro level, you know, one little tweet or one thing, and then you as an influencer has, and that might, you know, might see, I don't know how many followers you have, hundred, a thousand, whatever, <laughs> you know, but that's a macro effect where, you know, then that will compound into his career being... The sadness awesome. on the followers is that the most followers I have is on LinkedIn, <laughs> which is hilarious. Not really. I mean, you've been running... I know, but it's hilarious. It's got over 20,000, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and it's like... And I, now I get messages from LinkedIn saying, you are getting near your limit. You need, oh, limit. You need to get rid of some followers. I don't know. And I, the only reason I got there, do you know why? Because I go to Australia every year to, to stay with the in-laws and the family, and I sit at the beach. Mm. And one summer I was like, oh, it's, it had 6,000. Why don't I just spend a couple of days watching cricket and seeing if I can get to 10,000? And then I got to 20,000 within a year. Wow. Yeah. I need to get rid of some of those people from... So what places. was it about LinkedIn that made you want to have... Uh, so what drives me is, is that I, I'm a receptacle for other people. Mm -hmm. So when I was at the Ice House and now... I want to provide access to people. Yeah. And so I'm connected to all these people. Mm. And I have, an, you know, I used to be an executive assistant or a secretary. And I, un, I understand that um, I have a role to help other people get access to people. Mm. And even if I don't know people, I have the confidence to believe that I can get to them. Yeah. And guess what? If I, if I can get to them and they don't answer my email, who cares? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care. But mm. so my responsibility is to uh, ensure that other people know they can use me to get to the people they want to get to. Yeah. And I like it. It's cool. actually yeah. quite easy. You know, um, I, my kids sort of ban me from TikTok, but I'm on, on there, you know, and Instagram and others. They're just access points yeah. to enable an outcome. I mean, totally. I'm pretty sure you'll never, ever see photos of my kids, for me, on like Instagram with me. Mm -hmm. You know, well, I don't photo them. Yeah, yeah. It's not for me to put them in an environment. And I don't judge other people who do. That's mm. Yeah, it's their own shit. That's what they boundaries. want to do. But yeah. um, they certainly. I've been trying to get my eighteen-year-old going. You should put a LinkedIn profile together. She's like, Dad. And we've got this other friend called Lids, who's like an amazing founder with Esther of a company called Femi. And Lids is like, goes to me. Oh, LinkedIn! It just drives me insane. I'm, mm. Come on, Lids, get that profile. Start sharing on. She's you know, like, it's oh. good though because it's the two generations like. Oh. Yeah. You know, it's the wisdom being shared from both sides, which is cool. Yeah. Any regrets as a founder? Nah. Otherwise I wouldn't be here. No regrets ever? No. You ever get angry with yourself? No. Any people ever get angry with you? Probably. Do you care? No, because I don't, I don't mean to be annoying. <laughs> don't you don't mean to be annoying. <laughs> no. That's so funny. So that suggests that you are annoying. Maybe. Do you okay. believe in 360s? Oh, like review. Because you know, you said you don't like conflict, mm. right? Necessarily. Better I have never done a 360 at work. <laughs> Do you, are your staff happy? Um, we think they are, yeah. Do they leave? No. So they stay? They you stay. Pay them well. We pay them what we can, yep, and um, we believe a lot in wellness, yeah. so we try yeah. really hard. How did Wrestle start? Um, we, oh, well, Ben just like, actually, Ben was doing some interviews, I think it was with Idealog, yeah. and he wanted to um, turn them into these video articles instead of written, or as well as. And then um, they were like, oh, that's quite cool. So we did a little thing and then, um, but didn't take off. And he was like, well, this is a thing. And this was like when YouTube was like five years old or something. Um, and then he was like, oh, I, this is the thing. And then he just kind of started it from there. And it makes total sense now. Um, but at the time, you know, telling businesses they should make videos to their Funny customers eye. online is like, yeah, like a no. Well, you know, it's a big new thing. Um, and then, yeah, I think Ben was doing that for a while on his own. And then we decided to grow it from just a one person mm. thing to a company. And that's when I joined. And, it, yeah. You know, um, the opportunity that comes from observation mm. coupled with action mm. is something that is, you, you know, is, is a remarkable and joyful thing. 
Yeah. Because you can't... That's a really nice way to put it. You can't it, yeah. bias for action on everything. Yeah. But it's the moment... And sometimes, by the way, observation is driven by curiosity mm -hmm. and the bias for action is driven by paranoia. The you bias for... The bias for action is driven by paranoia. If Why? we don't act, oh, then someone else will, will take happen. it. Someone else will do it. Yeah. That's a, maybe a negative. The other thing mm. is... The other yeah, way I wouldn't the, have put it that way. The, other, the positive thing is it's a curiousness. Yeah. I mean, so my Curious to see what will come if yeah. I do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe in this. I yeah. have a hypothesis that this yeah. is important. Mm. And I'm single-mindedly, I'm just going after it. Yeah. Or you just go, this is cool, we should do more of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. That's, I like that. Mm. So um, I always ask everyone this question, um, which is, if you take yourself back to the 16-year-old, so where were you, which secondary school were you at? I did one year in oh, London, yeah. and then the rest of the time at Onslow College in Johnsonville, Johnsonville. in Wellington. Is that Wellington? Yeah. That's like... Yeah, uh, so it was Mufti, co-ed, no rules. It was wonderful. Really? Yeah. I spent a lot of time in Wellington because my, um, my family, my cousins, own the last farm at the top of the Pycock Hill. Oh, yeah. That, overlook, that looks back over to um, uh, the South Island. Yeah. A lot of time down there. So Beautiful. take yourself back to the equivalent of you yeah. as a 16 year old. So you're going into your school mm -hmm. and you're sitting down with a student yeah. who's 16. What's the advice? What's the guidance? So my advice is, I kind of touched on it earlier, but I haven't, didn't quite come to fruition, but it's that um, you don't have to know what you're good at and you don't have to know your career path now um, because what you might do in 10 years time might not even be invented yet so there's no point in being worried about like being really passionate about nutrition or really passionate about drones or anything because they might they won't be what they are now in 10 years 20 years time so it's okay to just go on the journey of curiosity and and do the things that are interesting to you whether that's painting or writing or playing games, sci-fi games, like all of those things will at some point take you to a place that um, you're happy with, even if, and yeah. And I think like my parents um, were so supportive, um, but they tried to get me into university um, mm. right out of high school. Um, and I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I ended up just like doing a random degree and then interest papers and wasted too much money. Um, and I'm not very good at learning academically. Anyway, so it well, matter. wasn't I had to pay it back? <laughs> you had to pay it back. They yeah. made you pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Um, I which is fine. Try that with my daughters. You should. You just make that the role, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. Um, Esty, I'm doing that. I'm You're sorry, paying me back. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, Esty. She doesn't watch these things, so okay, that's fine. Sweet. Um, she probably will. One of her friends will watch it and yeah, go. Yeah, they'll go. Oh no. You got to pay your university yeah, fees now. Yeah. Come and talk to me. I'll help you figure it out. Um, yes, so I think that don't judge yourself for not knowing what, uh, what you're doing. It's fine. Just have fun and enjoy what you're doing. Um, that's it, really. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, can I say thank you? Um, uh, it's not, uh, I don't take it as a small thing when I ask people to come and, you know, have a chat. Um, uh, I think it's, um, it's a gift I'm given by every person that comes. Because, you know, of course I spend my time researching, but the energy is all, and it's different for every person. Yeah. But for me, I do get to see into other people's lives what makes them tick. Mm. And, you know, I hope for other people watching, they get that opportunity to take one thing, two things, get inspired. Mm. You know, um, I'm personally, I don't know why this is, I, I grew up as one of four boys, and I have, you know, actually most of the, companies I mentor now are all females, cool. you know, female-led. Yeah. I, I don't know, and my daughter's a female, I, and my dog's a female. Uh, I, I don't know why it is, but it's a pretty special thing for me because there should be more female leaders in this world. Have you ever explored um, your feminine side? This is a very good question. Um, I have... Or just feminine energy, you know, like yeah. what does that look like? Uh, yeah, I have, in, and actually I listened to a podcast uh, Mo Bavitt, who is was the ex chief business officer for Google, mm. was interviewed by a guy called Stephen Bartlett, who's diary of a CEO, mm -hmm. and and he talked a lot about femininity in males. And actually, it made me go, "Wow, that's pretty interesting." Yeah, you know. Yeah, because I think um, 
our society is so binary where it's like you're a man or you're a woman, but there every every human Absolutely. being has both, and Absolutely. so you embody those masculine and feminine energies in different times and spaces, and it's really cool to hear you. And talk I, well, about I that. like I actually like being around females. Mm. Like that gives me a lot of energy. Yeah. I also think that with a lot of the younger first time founders, I can certainly help chart that path for mm. them, you know, as well as because my kids are like, Dad, stay out of our lives. Just be there. <laughs> Living and vicariously through our No, no, they just you know, yeah. I, I want them I want them to go on their path. Yeah, totally. They shouldn't be doing what I tell them to yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. And they'll so, appreciate that. So thank you. It's yeah, well, awesome thank you. to meet you and yeah. actually in person. And for you to come up from Wellington to do this, really appreciate it. Oh, that's awesome. All Thank right. you for what are you doing the rest of the a afternoon? Great space. Um, I am going to the Best Awards tonight. Um, a documentary series I made with the New Zealand Police called Pohe Kura is one of the finalists. So yeah, Good just going to rep that and have fun. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Thank thanks you. everyone. That's uh, Andy and Kat from Manaki Real Talks. I'm not sure what we've got coming up next. Something. Have a look at monarchy.io or on our YouTube channel. Thanks very much. Kakite.